Hey guys, thank you guys for joining me again. Um, we're going to be doing, I know I keep on putting this off, but I swear, I swear guys, with the way everything looks, I should be back into doing a proper video on First Kings tomorrow. I know I've said this like three times and I appreciate your guys' patience. I just want to be able to deliver an adequate um breakdown of any actual chapter that I take on. So instead, we are going to do two more stories out of beautiful Bible stories written by Roni in 1940, citing scripture at the beginning of each story. And again, let these just be something to, to feed you and nourish you in the extra biblical sense, but also to just spark something within you to maybe dive deeper onto these stories, or to just dive deeper into the Bible in general, so that these stories become second nature to you, and you can recall them at need, and, and, and be able to share them with others, or at least point others in the direction of these stories, because they all have have points to help um, strengthen our faith, um, um, make us more aware of our faith and the trials and the, and the triumphs of it all. With that in mind, guys, we're going to pray and then we're going to look at the divine call of Abraham. And then we're also going to look at, um, let's see, what is the second one called? God's wonderful promise to Abraham. All right, so let's pray real quick, guys, and we'll get into these. Uh, by the way, I've been having the chance to have my granddaughter last night and today. Right now, my mom is watching her so I could come over here and do this because she's just so rambunctious and wild right now, guys. She is so much fun, and I was living a life, sending myself to hell and filling myself full of needle holes and just going off the tracks, guys, and, and avoiding the beautiful life that God has enabled me to have now, and I want more than anything for no one to go down that path for any longer than they already have. Let's look at this, guys. Let's pray. Um, Heavenly Father, we want to come before you today, Lord, from a place of of gratitude and a place of thanksgiving, uh, a, a heart that wants to just profess and confess and testify to all that you have done, all that you do, and all that you will continue to do, Lord. Uh, a mouth that just wants to profess the, the cross and the glory and the work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, upon it. Father God, let us be bold, dutiful, purposeful, loving Christians. Christians who, who meet the call of excellence to exist in a place that is within this natural world, but, but in a manner that can only exist supernaturally as we are blessed to be indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Father God, I would pray a hedge of protection around the lives and a blood covering over the hearts and the minds of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Father God. I would pray for this video to be a nourishment to your flock, and I would ask that it call in new brothers and sisters to Christ, that it that it reaches out and touches people in their in their brokenness and in their addiction and in their lust and their perversion and their anger and their and their misled thoughts that are that are given the stamp of approval by the lies of the enemy and by the secular world and its lies, Lord. Let us not only speak, but let us act, think, live, breathe, and die by the faith, Father God. Push us ahead as workers in this great commission, Lord. Uh, revive our hunger, Lord, to dig into your word and to come to know you as well as we possibly can in our time here on this mortal coil. Father God, I would ask, Lord, that you guide us, lead us, and direct us. And we pray all of this in your heavenly name, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, guys. All right, so let's look at these stories. Let me get a drink. I love you guys so much. Thank you for your continued prayers. And just know the situation that I haven't really been talking about, but I've just been asking for prayers because the Lord knows the reason. That only continues slightly. For the most part, everything about that issue has been resolved. It's still a it's still an unfortunate issue, and maybe someday I'll talk about it more. But again, 
your continued prayers are still appreciated for the Lord to have his will come to bear in that situation. All right, guys, story number eight out of Beautiful Bible Stories, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 20 is the source material for this story, the divine call of Abraham. Let's go. On the plains of the great Tigris and Euphrates rivers, to the south of Mount Ararat, where Noah and his sons came out of the ark, and not far from the site of the unfinished Tower of Babel, there stood the city called Ur of the Chaldees. There lived in this city the family of Terah, who was a direct descendant of Shem. Among the sons of this family was a man named Abram, afterward called Abraham. Now Abram was chosen by God to found the nation later known as Israel a people who, in the main trend of history, should worship the one God of heaven and earth, to whom the revealed word of God should be committed, and through whom a Savior should be provided for the entire race. Beginning with the story of his call by God and his long journey to the land of Canaan, the remainder of the Old Testament scriptures is confined almost entirely to the history of that race. The references to other nations which sprang from the descendants of the three sons of Noah are purely incidental, relating to matters in which these nations played some part in the history of Israel. It was not the purpose of the Bible to trace the development of the kingdoms of this world, but rather to unfold the spiritual dealings of God with man, and to make known the plan of human redemption. The people who lived in Ur were not, as a rule, worshippers of the true God. In fact, they made gods of the sun and moon, and they were known to have bowed in prayer before idols made of both wood and stone. Although his father was an idolater, Abram worshipped God. In fact, he sought in every way to know and do God's will. He led an upright life in the midst of idolatry and wickedness and sought to guide his neighbors in the way of truth. The Lord talked with Abram from time to time and one day directed him to remove from Ur to a land which he would afterward show him. Abram told his father and the entire family of the message which he had received from God and they were so greatly impressed by his earnestness and deep religious convictions that they went with him on the journey to Canaan. After traveling several hundred miles in a northwesterly direction, they came to Haran, where they established a home. This city was located in what was then known as Aram, or Mesopotamia, and was about 500 miles northeast of the land which the Lord later gave to Abraham. After living in Haran for a time, Abram, Abram's father, Terah, died and was buried in this city. Abram's brother, Haran, who was the father of Lot, had died before they left the city of Ur. Abram and Nahor, who were another brother, prospered in the land of Mesopotamia. Their herds of sheep and cattle were greatly increased, and they had gathered many servants. Nahor and his wife were blessed with several children. But Abram and Sarah remained childless. The Lord appeared to Abram in Haran and directed him once again to take his family and all his possessions and resume the journey to the distant land of promise. God then blessed Abram, assuring him that his family would become a great people. The entire land would be given to his descendants from whom there was to spring a great nation. Though the blessing was given to Abram, all the families of the earth were to be blessed through his future generations. Now, Abram did not grasp the full meaning of these promises, nor did he know the course which was to bring him at last to the promised land, but he promptly obeyed the voice of God. Accompanied by his nephew Lot and all the servants gathered in Haran, Abram started at once on the long journey over the plains and hills and mountains, they journeyed. With all their possessions, they journeyed, not knowing where that journey would lead, but safely guided by divine providence. Amen. Abram's journey began at his native city of Ur, 
going up the river Euphrates more than 500 miles to the mountainous region of Mesopotamia, and then turning southwest from Haran with lofty ranges of mountains on the west and the great desert to the east. The travelers crossed many rivers and hills, passing through narrow valleys for another 500 miles, until they entered the narrow strip of country between the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River. This country was then known as Canaan, now called Palestine, and is appropriately named the Holy Land because of its historic identity with true religion and birth of the Savior. And we know that today much of that land is Israel again. Upon reaching the land of Canaan, Abram passed well into the center of the territory, setting up his tent under an oak tree on a plain not far from the city of Shechem. Here the Lord appeared to him and renewed the promise to give this land to him and to his descendants. Abraham built an, Abram built an altar, offered sacrifices unto the Lord, and worshipped him. He then removed to a mountain east of Bethel to the south of Shechem, and once again built an altar and worshipped God. He loved the Lord, he believed his promises, and he faithfully served the Lord wherever he stopped, even when surrounded by heathens. All right, guys, amen. We're going to jump ahead. We're going to skip the story of the parting of Lot and Abram. No particular reason. Just that today I really wanted to focus on, because I'm really feeling in my heart how important family is, and it's just... It's something that you see in Bible, you know, in the Bible, God really, he really allocates for the family. He really, he really commands and pushes us to be that family unit. And we see that in the story, much of the story of Abram. So let's look at story 10, God's wonderful promise to Abram. This is pulled from Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through verse 21. All right, guys, Genesis 15, verse 1 through 21. All right, guys, let's go. After Abram had been blessed by Melchizedek and had given to this priest of God a tenth of all his possessions, the Lord appeared to him in a special vision. Of the many remarkable conversations between God and his servant Abram, the most wonderful now took place. The opening words were spoken by God. Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Abram then laid bare his heart before the Lord, complaining that no blessing which the Lord might bestow upon him could make up for the fact that he had no child of his own, through whom the promises which God had already made could even be fulfilled. Up to this time, Abram and Sarai had not been blessed with children, and the only heir of Abram's household was a servant named Eleazar, who was a foreigner from Damascus. Under these conditions, it was hard for Abram to see how the Lord could keep his promise of making a great nation of his descendants, because he truly loved the Lord and had perfect faith in his power and justice. Abram was nonetheless willing to trust himself completely to the mercy of God Almighty. The Lord then told Abram that he should have a son of his very own through whom his, God's, promises should be fulfilled. That night he took Abram out of his tent and told him to gaze at the countless stars in the heavens. Then he was told that the number and glory of his descendants should be like unto the multitudes of bright shining stars upon which his eyes looked and wonder, and which no man could count. Before this meeting with God, Abram had been told that his offspring should be as innumerable as the sands of the sea and the dust of the ground. From now on, whether Abram looked down toward the ground, or out upon the shores of the sea, or up into the heavens, he would always, how could he not be, always reminded of the vast number of descendants to be given him by the hand of the Lord. Although Abram and his wife had reached so great an age that it seemed impossible for God to perform the miracle of giving them a son, Abram did not lose hope. Believing with all his heart that God would do what seemed to be impossible, 
in order to keep his promise, Abram accepted the word of God without question. His faith rose into heroic vigor, and for it he was accounted righteous before the Lord. The Lord took Abram into full confidence concerning the future of his offspring. In symbolic language, he revealed the future slavery of the children of Israel in Egypt. Their return to the land of Canaan and their growth into the great nation through which the Savior should be given to all the world. All the promises which God had given before were now summarized and made binding in this glorious holy covenant. Included in this covenant were the following promises. The gift of a son. The future greatness of the people descended from that son. And final possession of the promised land. In return for these blessings, Abram promised to serve God faithfully for all of his days upon earth. Of Abram in that hour, it may be said, majesty combined with meekness, righteousness and peace unite to ensure those blessed conquests, his possession full right, ride triumphant, decked in robes of purest light. Amen, guys. What a beautiful take on that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that, guys. I love getting to share God's Word with you so much. And, oh my goodness, I really do, I promise. Tomorrow will be a new video on First Kings, I swear. I swear on everything, guys. If not, I will chop off my right hand. Because it has done offended me if it don't get into it tomorrow. Um, guys, uh, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. I drop a new video six days a week. Typically, it's a chapter-by-chapter -chapter breakdown. Sometimes it's Bible stories. Sometimes it's scripture countdown. Sometimes it's a variety of different things, but all centered on our faith and, and, our, and our glorious triumph in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, what, what pulls us together is what fixes us, not what's broken about us. It's what, it's what fixes us, and it is God. It is God and it is His glorious Son and His wonderful work upon the cross and the beautiful indwelling of the Holy Spirit that we are so blessed to have since that day of Pentecost. Um, guys, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it if you loved it. If you have any prayer requests, any comments, any questions, any suggestions, anything, guys, drop that down here into the comment section and... Um, you guys already know I love you so much. Father God loves you even more. Please go out there and have a blessed day. Hey, and do me a favor. Tell somebody you see how much Jesus loves them. Because he does. And they need to know it.